Hi, this is Kelly from CNC Labs. Today, I'm going to talk about a G-code sender or a machine interface program. We do get quite a few questions about this, um, about you know what is a G-code sender? How do I use it with the long mill? Um, and which one should I use? Among many other questions about the functionalities, such as how do I jog the machine um, a certain amount or uh, how do I connect to my machine? So today I hope to address many of those questions in this video and help you build some intuition on G-code senders because many of them have um, very similar functionalities. So let's begin. So I will be using G-Sender for the, the majority of this video. However, I will throw in clips of me using UGS just to see how certain actions might be different on UGS, even though the core functionalities are the same. So first thing we'll address is what is a G-code sender? A G-code sender or machine interface is the software program used to relay instructions from the computer to your long mill. So it knows how to move your long mill to make your project. It talks directly to the Arduino on your control board, which is the blue and white board. Um, and that acts as the brains of the board because it can process those instructions and send them to the motors via the drivers. So this applies to all G-code senders. They're just talking to the control board. In this diagram, I've shown that the computer is connected to the Arduino and it's, you know, relaying information to the Arduino and actually providing power as well. In addition, the drivers are actually powered by the power supply, but they are getting information from the Arduino. So that's how everything works together. So time and time again, customers ask us, what software should we choose? They might have a specific project they want to do, or they think they're more of a beginner, so they want something very simple. And we do have some resources on this. One of the things we've developed is a toolchain wizard, which allows you to take a very short quiz uh, to help you determine what might work best for you. And this doesn't just include G-code senders, it includes CAM software, even design software, um, as well as the G-code senders. If you'd like more ge general lists of uh, possible machine interfaces you could use. We have the some described here uh, on the screen that we've used more extensively and they go into detail about each type. And also we have a software table where we've come up with a list of all the potential software you can use that would work with the log mill. You can choose which types of filters to put on so that you're finding one that's specific to your needs. So this can be very helpful for you, not just to look for G-code senders, but also design and CAM software. The good thing is you can always try various G-code senders or softwares in general uh, to find which ones work best for you. If you want to look at all the G-code senders on this list, all you have to do is press this uh, interface checkbox so that you get all the results here. So from our list, we have 13 to recommend. So most G-code senders will have the following baseline functionalities. You should be able to establish a connection to your machine, jog or move the machine with the arrow keys, set the origin point, send commands with G-code through a console or dialog box. You can load a file into the program and run it. And you can also start, stop, and pause the file streaming. All these features are laid out already for you, so you don't need to adjust them. Uh, but on other G-code senders like UGS, uh, the windows might not be there. The functionalities might be hidden. So you have to uh, configure your layout so it works best for you, both for practicality, but also for safety. 
So as you can see on UGS, um, the windows are all here, but that's because I dragged things around and adjust the things. So I just want to show you where you can find um, all these windows if you're missing any features that you think should be there. So most of the windows should be under window full state. That will also allow you to zero each axis on its own. Check out the state. Consoles here now, and let's see, draw controller might be useful. Yeah, so all the features that I want now are laid out in a way that I like, and so that means I'm ready to go. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is connectivity. Properly connecting onto the G-code sender means that the Gico sender is actually able to talk to the Arduino on the long board. So that means that USB connection is secured. So um, when you connect, uh, you should be able to jog shortly after. So on G sender, this is pretty easy to do. You just go here um, to the plug area and then you select the port. So this COM3 indicates which port on your computer the USB cable is connected to. And for our machine, we use a baud rate of 115200 and Gerbil. Now, it might not be as simple as that if you're using a different G code sender. I know CNCJS is also pretty intuitive, but on UGS, um, you have to kind of put in some of the work. So here we have the UGS opened up and we have the port available. One thing we have to make sure is that we disconnect from the other G-code sender we're using. So let's say we were testing both of them at once. Uh, make sure to disconnect from one of them because the machine can really communicate to only one port at a time. So we have COM3 here, we have Gerbil, which is good, and baud rate 115200. So we should be able to successfully connect. We know we're able to connect when we can jog the machine. Specifically on UGS, if you want to look for additional signs that you've connected properly, just check that the controller state is in idle and that there is an orange plug at the top left of your screen. So sometimes the machine has trouble connecting to your G-code sender. This could be due to a variety of things. First, your Arduino might actually be loose in your control board. So the computer might not register it. The second thing would be, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you might be connected to one G-code sender already, so you're unable to connect to the one you actually want to use. Another thing is you might be using the wrong COM port. So just try whatever's available there and try connecting again. So you can move the machine by using the jog feature, which are these arrows right here, jogging in the X, Y, and Z. And you can also jog diagonally with these buttons as seen. Additionally, you can change how much you move by and how fast you go with these buttons. So you can use this or type in a number and this will allow you to uh, modify how fast and how far you move. You can use these buttons as well to quickly change uh, the settings for the distance and speed. And at this point, once you're connected, you should be able to jog your machine. You should be hearing the motors turn and seeing your machine move whichever way you control it. However, if you aren't seeing that, that may be due to a problem in the e-stop or the power supply. So just check that your uh, power adapter is fully secured and that your e-stop button is released. One last thing to mention is that on G-Sender, you can stop in the middle of a jogging procedure by pressing this cancel button in the middle.
Now we're going to talk about zeroing your machine. Each G code file will have a starting position in which the coordinates of the toolpaths will reference off of. This is the zero or origin. When you bring in the G code file into the G code sender, you will need to set your zero for the job on your material so that the design you have will be positioned properly relative to your stock material. So on the G code sender for our design with the long low words, our origin is at the bottom left of the L. And you can tell because all the axes, uh, the X, Y, and Z axes, like the red, green, and blue lines all intersect in that one area. So that's where our zero is. So we need to mimic that by jogging our machine to like the bottom left corner of our stock material or wherever we want to start that corner of that L of our long mill text and then zero it there. All you need to do is once you've jogged your machine to that proper position, you can press 0x, 0y, and 0z or press 0 all to do it all at once. Just make sure that when you're zeroing Z, the bit you want to use is touching the top surface of your material. Now let's say you want to jog the machine in a certain position because you wanted to put some hold down clamps. By jogging the machine, you don't change the zeros. You only change the zeros or you change your origin when you pressed 0x, 0y, 0z, or pressing zero all. Otherwise, your zero should be saved. If you want to check where your origin is, you can press go x, y, z, zero. You know if you've properly zeroed everything when the large text, the large numbers are 0, 0.00 for the x, y, and z sections. The smaller numbers below it indicate something else entirely. It has to do with using limit switches or homing switches on your machine. And those smaller texts of numbers reset each time you open up the G code sender. For zeroing purposes, all you need to pay attention to are those large numbers above. The next feature we'll be talking about is the visualizer. This is a feature we've been using this whole time. It's the black box right here to show the tool paths that your job will have. And I'll also show the dimensions, the overall dimensions of your job. Additionally, you can use this cube to navigate to the different views of your job. So you can see it from the front, from an angle and things like that. You can also see the bit or the tool you're using relative to your workspace. And this is more of a theoretical position of your bit. The reason why is because the long mill doesn't have sensors, so it can't provide feedback on where the bit is on your actual machine. Make sure you're not moving any of the transmission components, meaning like the lead screw or the gantries, because that could cause you to lose your origin. Your design might end up being skewed from the position you actually want it to be in. Some people find that using a touch plate or a touch probe to be the most accurate way to set the origin of their job. Each G-code sender will have a touch probe process that is different, but somewhat similar. And this is just because there are so many different touch probes out there that you can purchase. So some G-code senders try to optimize it for a variety of touch probes, whereas some G-code senders are more specific and work best with a specific type. Additionally, some G-code senders might not even have a touch probe process that is embedded in their software. You might have to create your own script or macro to zero your machine with a touch plate. So on G-Sender, the touch probe module is on the bottom right corner. And if you go to the gears um, and go to probe, you can adjust the settings for the probing process and for the touch plate you actually have. If you have a long mill and our touch probe, you shouldn't need to adjust these settings. All you need to do is ensure that the diameter of your tool is on that right side list 
and that when you're about to probe, you choose that correct diameter bit. Now for UGS, it's a different story. You should make sure that the touch probe settings are the ones listed on our website. If you go to resources, to our touch plate page, you should see all the numbers in red and those values will work with our touch plate. Now I can show you where to find the probe module on UGS. So as we connect, I'll just close that window and then open it again in the windows, um, plugins, and then probe module. Again, just make sure that all the settings on those four tabs have the values listed as those in our resources. In order to run a job, you have to load up your file. On GSender, just press the load file button. Just navigate to the folder in which you have your files. So here I have my log mill line file and it ends with a .nc. That means it's a nc file. All the files you load onto your G-code sender must be a .nc or .gcode file. You can double click this and your job's ready. You have to make sure on your CAM program, whether that is some sort of Vectric program or Aspire or even Easel, you need to be exporting your G-code with a post processor that is suitable for the long mill. In this case, uh, for the long mill, you can use a Gerbil Inch or Gerbil Millimeter post processor. Just qu to quickly show you with some screenshots, before you save your toolpaths, you get to choose the post processor you want to apply. 
And so this shows you that you can select a post processor with the drop down button. And usually there are many post processors available. So you just have to scroll down to the Gerbil inch and Gerbil millimeters. Just to give some explanation, a post processor is essentially a translator. It translates and formats commands so that your particular machine will be able to interpret the G code properly. Now we'll run our job. You can press the start job button and on the visualizer, you'll see that the bit is moving in the path of the log mill text. At the bottom here, you will see the estimated time remaining for your job. And you can also see on the console over here, the commands being sent from the computer to the machine. You can also see the pause and stop buttons in case you need to stop in the middle of the job. The next few things I'll be talking about will be more advanced features, things you usually don't even need to touch if you're just a beginner. So the first thing is the EEPROM settings. If you need to change the settings for your machine, which control things like your maximum speed and acceleration, your workspace boundaries, and even the direction of your axes, you can do that through the EEPROM settings. Some people who wanted to install limit switches would also have to modify some settings in the firmware EEPROM settings. So I'll show you two ways to access it. On G-Sender, there are two ways. Uh, some G-Code senders, you can only access it through the console. So the first way is through the console and you just type in dollar sign, dollar sign. Those are all the EEPROM settings. You can see there are a lot of settings, so you can modify these and make them work for your application. So how you would change them is by typing in dollar sign, your setting, and then changing the value to what you want it to be now. So typing in dollar sign, the setting number equals something. Make sure it's within the same decimal place as the original. So this sends the updated EEPROM setting to your Arduino. So it won't change from whichever G-code sender you end up using. Another way to modify the EEPROM settings is to go into firmware. And so this box shows all the settings. To restore the default EEPROM settings, just press the button on G-Center. Otherwise, you can refer to our website for the EEPROM settings. The last thing I wanted to talk about was macros. Macros are pre-programmed G-code commands that you can run with just a few buttons. They can be used for various applications, such as jogging to a certain part of your machine or turning a laser on and off. So I already created a macro for the laser on, but let's create one for laser off. I will just put in the command dollar sign 32 equals zero, and that will turn it off if I have a laser installed. I'll add the new macro. So let's see what happens if I try to run them. If I run the laser on, the script started. And you can see what happens with the console. All it did was send the command to the machine. And if I turn it off by pressing this button, it should have completed. And you can see that here. So all it is is a way to automate uh, commands being sent to your controller instead of typing them out. Well, that's everything I wanted to show you guys today. Thanks for watching this video. 
I hope it helps clarify some things and helps you get started on making cool projects on your long mill.